Dirty Truth Tellers. So good evening, everyone, and welcome. We're Epstein and Hassan, the Dirty, the Dirty Truth Tellers. And tonight, we're actually introducing a new title to our series because yes. we've been doing a series. Uh, we do two shows, basically. We do Epstein and Hassan's Dirty Truth Tellers, which is just me and Hassan, and we sit here and we talk about politics and other relationships, things, relationships. Life. And then we decided that we've always really enjoyed interviewing people, which we used to do on our internet radio show. So then we started doing a, a thing called... Uh, Couple to couple, where we're introducing, we call it Epstein and Hassan go couple to couple, and we've been interviewing couples. But tonight we're taking a new, a new idea, and we're calling it Epstein and Hassan go menage a trois. Yeah, trois. Because we have <laughs> single guests, and this is all based on this idea that we have that, you know, during the uh, pandemic, for about most of the pandemic, we had no contact with any human beings. It was just Hassan and I in our tiny little uh, yes. Greenwich Village apartment. And then we started thinking like, you know, let's just say we wanted to have group sex with people. You can't do it anymore. So this is how you do group sex in the new millennium. In your you, mind. You do it mentally on Zoom. <laughs> mentally yes. on Zoom. Right. So yes. you don't have to be in good physical shape. We're not shape. showing you nothing right. but our minds. You know, you can actually <laughs> visualize me as I always ask. You can picture me with muscles. Oh, come on. You know, you could get a great imagination. No, no. That's like a good me imagination. saying to them, imagine me being 20. Like, no. no I would think, imagine no. you with uh, being a light-skinned Black but, woman. No, but that has nothing to do with young. I know, but that's but but it, since they can see us, oh, so they, you're saying they would prefer a light complexion. I didn't say one? they'd prefer it. There are people who you yourself. When I told you that my first sexual fantasy was with Marilyn McCrew, Marilyn McCrew, McCrew yes. of the Fifth Dimension, you said who would think anybody would go to fucking Marilyn McCrew of the Fifth Dimension? But you know what? I realized I was putting the judge. No, because you said she was light skinned, and yeah. you know, and you said, well, well, just Marilyn McCrew. I mean, I don't Marilyn know. McCrew is pretty hot in her youth, and she's even hot as an older woman. Okay, but let's, let's not get wrapped yeah, into no, our own no, fight. We no. can do that later on. Yes, and we will. Our first guest, as we go into Menage a Trois, yes, is a woman who we've known for a number of years. Uh, we interviewed her on our on our internet show, yes. uh, the Black and the Jew Comedy Hour, and now she's back. I think it's probably about eight years later. I think something so, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. Please welcome yeah. Kat Mondu. Yay! Yay! Well, welcome, Kat. Now she's okay. going to give you the official um, introduction. Okay, so we tried to put together, piece together. There's so much information out on you. Um, so this is what the little bit that we because we have a limited amount of time that you've lived in Mexico, England, and France. Yes. Um, you've modeled for various photographers on artistic projects, um, Andre Buckmaster and Don Shapiro, among others. I think it's others. Adrian. 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 Yeah. Yes. Uh, your foray into the world of burlesque began in about 2008 with the yeah. Christmas show where you portrayed a lumberjack wearing nothing but tinsel underneath his long johns. Very creative. <laughs> yes. Um, you've also done a uh, uh, Christmas tree. <laughs> uh, Marilyn Monroe tribute artist, neoclassical burlesque dancer, your pinup model, art school model, actress, producer, performance arts based in New York City. You also were the producer of the Dark Carnival Burlesque, a monthly yeah. burlesque show, and a registered nurse. Yeah, and, and I deliver babies. Yes, <laughs> your mom and your grandma, if I'm not mistaken. I'm a grandma. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow, wow. wow. Boy, it's good. I'm glad we have a long show. I know, just to I know. It's about an hour and a half. So, and, and you're a grandma. I am a grandma. I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old granddaughter, both of them uh, in Brooklyn. Wow. Wow. I'm telling you, my grandmas don't daughter. look like the grandmas when I grew yeah, up. Yeah, my grandma does not look like you. They are definitely. Yeah, I, I let my hair go natural. This is actually my hair color, but I have some gray. I don't know if you can see it on camera. I but I remember the grandmas having like white, really curly, tight, curly hair. and the blue. Like, that blue. 
that blue right. wasn't the blue that's in now. It was kind of like yeah. a, some blue violet stuff going on. Yes. So let's yes. catch up with you. You're no longer, are you still doing the burlesque thing? That was when you, we, we met you at that point, you were producing a show at the cutting room. Yes. Yeah, that was Dark Carnival. That was Dark Carnival. I was uh, producing that show with Gothic Hangman, who's my ex. Um, uh, and we did a really fun show. Like, it was very creative. We we always had a theme. Um, and But yeah, that, that show's finished. <laughs> and I started producing another one uh, that I only did one show, but I liked the idea. It was uh, singing and burlesque at the same time. So everybody who was doing wow. their was singing and we did one show on Coney Island that was a lot of fun I have an idea for you grandma burlesque I mean if you do <laughs> show, get all these well, hot grandmas together that's you know? a great idea because a lot of us are grandmas now there's a few like Kitten DeVille and there's a lot of the um, really traditional burlesque people have grandchildren <laughs> you know what we were saying is like because madonna recently got into a uh, an online internet fight with 50 cent because he criticized her for showing her ass and trying to be sexy and he's like you know you're too old for that and that really pissed us off because we're yeah. old so for us it's like what do you mean you're too old for it you know um, i mean old is is now the new young well, yeah and exactly. what do you what do you think? I turn what? Go ahead. I just want to ask you, what do you think in terms of, you know, we live in a society where we, uh, at a certain age, uh, sexuality and sensuality is cut off, like you're mm. not supposed to have it. What are your feelings on that? Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think it's an individual thing, isn't it? Like how you feel about your own sexuality. It's more like what you feel in in your own personal your body how you perceive your body how you perceive yourself so i think if you're not feeling sexual um that's legitimate if you do want to feel sexual and you're not and you feel like i i don't know i don't have the answers for other people um i think it's fine to take a break <laughs> um that's what i'm doing right now i'm single that's <laughs> so why we're having a menage en toi. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's right. You, know, and, I, and you I, don't even have to worry, you know, because <laughs> you would see me naked, it would be very hard on your heart. I mean, you would go, oh, my God, please get dressed, Epstein, please. But this way, you can just imagine me. Just imagine. Uh, and, as a nurse, I've seen a lot of bodies. Oh, wow. That's right. You're a nurse, too. That's yes, right. And I've seen probably more than my fair share of vaginas for a straight yeah. woman because I... <laughs> I did deliver, I did help deliver, you know, thousands of babies over the years. Wow. That's very yeah. intense. So when wow. you, so this is an interesting point because there's a, different people have different points of view with this. When I first met uh, Naima, when we first started hanging out, she was the kind of person that liked to be naked all the time in the apartment. And nice. I would actually say to her, you know, put some clothes on because for me, and I'm not saying I'm right about this, but for me, naked is sex so oh, okay. you know, i didn't think that like, way you know you I, can't I you know if way. i'm going to see you every day let's say for a month and you're always naked then mm -hmm. when it comes to sex time that's like i i, I just associate sex and naked but as yeah a, a lot of naked, a lot of guys i mean a lot of people i should say do feel like nakedness is an invitation for sex but i see nakedness as freedom yes yes absolutely yes you it, can, it I was an art school model for, um, in my twenties while I was, you know, before I was pregnant, while I was pregnant, while I was breastfeeding and being naked in front of all those people was empowering. It was, it made me feel like really connected to my physical body because I was being seen by so many people and I'm a real like strong empath. So I could feel the respect and the gratitude it was just such a beautiful feeling I was afraid when I first started but then like as soon as I dropped my robe and all these people just put their heads down and started drawing I was like holy shit this is power I wow. love it wow have you ever wanted to do that Hassan no be a model like no I, ne I never thought about that and I can't appreciate it and you know the point is is that as I was stating earlier we live in a society where we look at aging as a cutoff 
Mm. Just a lot of things, you know, whether you choose to show your body or not show your body, have a relationship or not have a, mm. have a relationship for yourself. You have a lineage right now. You have mm. you, you have your daughter and you have yeah. your daughter. Granddaughters. I have two daughters, a son and, and two granddaughters. What do you see for your daughters, uh, the difference, the challenges they have to deal with right now. Yes. Yes, I do. I do. I, um, I admire them so much. They're so strong and I'm so proud of them, all of them. They're different. And so, I mean, I could do a whole show on my kids cause I, I like, they inspire me. Um, and each of them got a little piece of me. That's just unique. Like I, and some stuff that I don't even know where it came from. Like my oldest daughter is a businesswoman. She's just like, none of them went to high college. They're all like successful in what they do. Um, my middle child is in China, Beijing, and she's uh, doing a consulting business and she's doing some acting work and doing shows for, you know, kids, uh, like a door explorer thing. And she's learning Chinese. And then my son, he's learning how to be an organic farmer, um, which all of those it's a really like important work. Now I have a question for you because we don't have children or grandchildren, but I am a person who lives in this world. And I always yeah. think about people who now like you have grandchildren, so their whole future is ahead of them. Are mm. you, are you fearful about what's happening in the United States? For example, that we might have a civil war within the next couple of years, plus yeah. great wealth differences between poor and rich people today. Do you think your mm -hmm. grandchildren are going to be able, and plus, of course, global warming, all mm -hmm. the issues with the environment? How do you yeah. feel as a grandmother? Are you fearful about this? Or are you optimistic? I'm optimistic. I think the planet is. I mean, I, I mean, there's me in the is the mom and the grandma who think about like, oh, I got to protect my family. I got to like take care of them, and I got to make sure they're all right, and I got to make sure that the world is okay around them, and I you know, swaddle them in cotton balls, make sure that nothing hurts them. That's always been, you know, a huge factor of being a mom, but um, my own experience, um, I didn't really get that. I was kind of like a very independent, like out on my own, like figuring it out, just flying by the seat of my pants kind of person. And I think my kids got that from me. So I trust that they got this. I totally trust that they got this and they're teaching it to my granddaughters and like, right, it's gonna right. just go on and on and they're going to be world changing people. I think. Right. So see, see, what, she, what she gave her parents was something a lot of parents didn't give us was fearlessness. What does yeah. that look like? And that's so important. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I you to hear that in, internal voice. My mom had, she had a, uh, I guess she had a worrying mom and she kind of got that too. There was like two different versions of my mom. She was a huge worrier. Like, I'm worried about you. What are you doing? New York City is so dangerous. Why are you living there? Da, 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 da. And then there was a side of her when I was growing up where she was nowhere to be found. I was free range. I was like a free range chicken going everywhere, eat, you know, like getting into trouble, climbing trees, you know, catching animals like snakes and they could have been poisonous. I don't know. I was really good at it. <laughs> Nobody watched me. I just kind of like explored the world when I was younger. And the, I guess my fearless. Someone was protecting you. See, Somebody I was. Trying. I was in total fear. Like my, every moment of my life, my mother put into my mind like the potential dangers. Mm. You know, I had yeah. a Jewish mother. Like if you have a Jewish mother, the basic thing they're going to fill you with is like uh, a lot of very gassy food and a lot of uh, you know guilt and fear. <laughs> so I've lived my guilt life with gas, guilt, and fear. fear. Yeah. So guilt and gas. <laughs> Yes. Yes. One of our favorite stories is when we first met, Hassan says to me, you know, like, oh, if you need to fart, you know, we're human beings. Don't feel uncomfortable. Just fart. And yeah. she tried to change that uh, once she did. Oh. Now, the I'm always the first one to fart in a relationship. Wow. <laughs> that's that. That's that's well, your she's very, fearlessness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're very yeah. fearless. I've seen yeah. you on like with an owl like yeah you gotta fearless. tell me what was that i absolutely but she said she used to catch owls. snakes when she was a kid she's fearless i know yeah 
I needed. <laughs> we talked about that photo for like an hour. Yeah, that like, was like, how the hell do you even do that? Uh, well, when I was younger, I used to live on a farm and I would love to catch the chickens. And funny enough, I'm actually taking care of chickens at the farm I'm living on right now. And they're letting me pet them now. They've gotten used to me. Um, but the owl thing was, uh, we got a phone call, me and Hoppy, my um, ex, who's a friend, we're still friends. Um, he got a phone call from a friend of his who said that a fire truck had hit an owl and the owl was wounded, the wing was broken. Um, and could you come get it and bring it? Cause he's a animal like transporter. He can transport animals to the rescue people. So we did that. We got a cat carrier and brought the owl, uh, you know, picked him up and I held it cause Hoppy was driving and he just relaxed in my arms. They're so light. They, they look big, right? But that's all feathers like poofed out. The little tiny birds. Wow. Oh my God. Some of them, some oh. owls are pretty big. Thanks, so you work guys. with chickens now? Is that what you said? Yeah, I live on an organic farm and- um, Are you a vegetarian I'm, or do you eat chickens? No, I eat everything. I'm, uh, let's see. This is a organic meat and vegetable farm. We have eggs, chickens, beef, cow, uh, beef cows, no dairy, um, chickens, lambs, and pigs, pork. See, this is my great fear. I'm a, um, the only thing I eat now, cause I've gotten a lot older, the only thing that really, that I can eat regularly that doesn't mess up my digestion is chickens. I yeah. eat chicken and I eat rice and vegetables, but chicken is the only meat I eat. And right. I also do believe in reincarnation. I'm a practicing Buddhist and mm -hmm. I'm thinking nice. that when I die, I'm visualizing like millions of chickens waiting for me on the other side to fuck me yeah. up. Like, why? <laughs> that's the that's out. the Jewish mother in you. <laughs> yeah. Things I worry about. Yeah. I see like millions of yeah. chickens like yeah. fucking me up. Like, yeah. you son of a bitch. You no, know, they came yeah. back as chickens for a reason. They that was just part of their journey. They okay. they'll be something else another time. She's a good grandma. Yeah, I, I would know. definitely, you know, yeah, I, I would yeah. rest my head on but her what shoulder. What made you make the decision to convert a bus and live in it? Oh wow! Well, um, you remember that that guy, the rent, the rent's too damn high guy. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I do yes, remember that yes, guy. Yes, <laughs> yeah. he planted a seed. <laughs> Love it. And, um. Well, I was starting to empty nest. My oldest daughter had left home and my middle child was graduating from high school that year. She was 18 and she was gonna leave home. And I had a three bedroom apartment that was way too expensive. I didn't really need it. Uh, my son was 16. So I thought, um, I actually promised them that the next thing that we live in is gonna belong to us. And then I, I wanted to keep that promise so bad that I started getting really creative, like, okay, what can I buy with what I've got right now? And I decided that um, I could probably afford an RV. And, and then I was looking at RVs and they were kind of like, the ones that I could afford were kind of crappy. And during that journey, I actually found a website that talked about converting school buses. And I thought, that sounds like a really cool project. I'm going to try and do that. So I bought a school bus for $3,500 and I um, gutted it. I actually had a guy, uh, I paid a guy to take the seats out. And then me, Hangman, and my son ripped up the floor and just built this floating floor with insulation and then the walls were insulated and um, bead, bead board or whatever it's called. And then I just kind of like, we built it out and made it into this livable thing. It took a while though. It was like not easy to um, keep going once we were actually, I was living in it full time. My son was living with his father part-time. I was living in the bus full time and Hangman was living at his mom's and visiting me, but how did, you, it, how did you like running water and all that stuff? Well, it was a learning curve because when I first got on the bus, I didn't have any of that. I had a five gallon jug with a pump on it so I could, you know, pour the water into the sink and wash and whatnot. And I got a gym membership so I could um, shower. 
Um, and uh, I mean, it was, I'm actually writing a book about <laughs> the whole three years of living in Brooklyn in this bus. Wow, it's really, I mean, I'm really glad we're doing this because, like, I've been procrastinating. I've got 300 words you done. Definitely, you must. It you sounds must. like a great, you must. You that must. sounds like yeah. a, a very good yeah. book. Yeah. Now, it's, it's, it's an adventure. Well, it's then, I mean, you're a very adventurous person. Like, just yeah. like you are, I could feel you're very a free, like a free person. Yeah. Do you still have the bus? I do. I do. If it was daylight, I would show you it's outside. <laughs> Wow. Um, and it's, um, if you give me your address, like message me and I'll send you a card, a seasonal card that I did with the bus. <laughs> I mean, this is like, well, we've been following it. Well, we see whenever, you on Facebook. Whenever you, know. you have left in photos or information and we're always, yeah. you were like our, uh, our camp girl. Well, right. It's like, damn. You're like not scared. She's yeah. not scared. That's yeah. that's that's how I was. I think I was born without the fear gene or something. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Of course, the question that I need to know is: Did you ever, when you had sex on the bus? Yeah. Like, um, did you? Was that a, a fun experience? Did you? Did this one somebody driving the tr bus while you were having sex? Could no, you? Oh, nobody <laughs> drove the bus but me. Okay. Was uh, nobody was. Bus. Hangman didn't have a driver's license. My son didn't have a driver's license at the time. So I was the only driver. Um, and I wanted yeah, to have having sex the on the bus, it was. Um, it no, I always wanted that. Usually stationary. I mean, always stationary. We might make it move a little bit, but it was stationary. <laughs> You can't even deal I, with a hotel room. No, no, I, no, 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 no. I, you're trying to impress her. I am trying to impress. I'll tell you what. There was people who I heard everything in the street. Like if somebody was walking past and talking about the bus, I heard everything they say. And sometimes I was just laying there watching Netflix, and then somebody would bang on the window, and say, "I know what you're doing in there." Wow. <laughs> like I don't think you do. <laughs> She, she doesn't understand like much of my early before, I've been with her for 35 years. So like this is Beautiful. a time. But when I was young, I always was, you know, I lived with my parents. So I was having sex in my car. Like that was <laughs> me. A car is where you have sex. That's so and, uncomfortable. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Really, like really. Um, Unless you work hourly or you're 12. You know. Yeah, exactly. You're tiny little like. <laughs> And yeah, you're a high school girl. But the other no. thing is you have, your bones haven't formed yet. <laughs> quick in a car, no, you know, because no. it's kind of like you can't like it's not like a four. She needs like a four hour build yeah, up. Hell yeah, I have like to. It's like a Ben scene. Hur. When you have sex with her, it takes yeah. days. It's like, Sounds it's, like tantric sex. Is it yeah, tantric exactly. sex? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's tantric. beautiful. I, I think that's what I want to do next. Like my next relationship. But I'm I'm taking a really like decent break right now because um I need to like build this up and just make this like I'm a giver and every time I'm in a relationship I just give everything I got <laughs> and I just need to start giving myself something. Absolutely wrong with that. I, I yeah. one of the most challenging things is being really honest about what is it that I truly believe will will make me happy. And being really honest about that. Yeah. And allowing, since you're into farming, you know what it's like to plant something and let it grow. Yes. And saying to Steve, to the, uh, just to this tonight, uh, we get impatient. Mm -hmm. We don't want to allow things to grow. And I would look at wanting this relationship, like symbolically, I would plant a tree or something and have that represented. And really yeah. the sense of how the process it takes for that to uh, come to flourishing, to, to really grow. Yeah, it is a process and it takes patience and people usually want instant gratification. Not everybody, everybody is different. We do, we do. It's a cultural, yeah. we're all conditioned. Like that's yeah. the thing. Like we're very conditioned to want things very quickly. But mm -hmm. not theatric sex for yes. just for one second, because yes. I, I don't want to let this pass by. Yeah. If you find someone who's a really a uh, tantric practitioner, you know, mm -hmm. part of the thing for males when they have tantric sex is they don't call, they don't have an orgasm. Right. They they just recycle it. They yes. recycle it. And that builds up inner chi. Yes. Which they which then is converted into what they I have no experience of this, of course, but what they say is much more greater pleasure than having an orgasm 
So yeah. someone who's really, uh, you know, a real practitioner. A lot of people, you know, practice tantric sex, meaning they have they, no clue. They have no clue. You know, they just want to yeah. get laid. And if but somebody also, wants tantric sex, they'll give them. Tell them something. Sex. You something Steve said to me about men that I as as men get older, uh, a man loses that. This is what I realized. You know, after I hit sixty, I started realizing something that I was enjoying life much more. Hmm. And part of what it was about was enjoying sex too much more was that mm-hmm. I no longer felt unbelievably driven for it. Like mm. from the time I was like 12 and then on, it was an obsession. Like I was always wanting sex. I was always thinking about sex. And when I hit, I started getting older, it started sort of mellowing out, which yeah. was actually good. It was like, I was just, you know, used to that feeling. And a lot of men, as they mm-hmm. get older, they'll try to keep that feeling going. For example, like they'll use cocaine or something. Because I, I have this theory about cocaine that men use cocaine because the charge that you get from cocaine reminds you of the charge that you had when you were like a teenager. You may not be able to perform, but you're charged. And right. they want that feeling, that like driven urge. For me, it was like, I'm glad I can relax more now, you know, mm-hmm. and over years because as we've been talking about in a bunch of our shows we have a monogamous relationship and we're not judgmental of people who don't have monogamous relationships but what we've learned is through monogamy it's sort of the ultimate um snm because what's a bigger bondage what what can you do (laughs) more to than you can't have sex with anyone else this is it there's something about so true <laughs> stay here even when it's shitty right <laughs> not that i have to stay i've made that uh conscious decision too yeah and yeah I, I, but I, you guys know each other so well you know what make what makes each other feel good and what what works but and we also know, know cat something that took us a long time and we have to keep re- i'm not responsible for his happiness he's not responsible for mine Exactly. And that's a very, very challenging thing because I was raised that, yeah, your partner is supposed to do that. Yeah. But nobody really makes you come. No. Like, nobody makes you come. No. You come from your own side. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, you, despite some people's best efforts, you won't come if your mind isn't in it or you're, you're exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Or else you thought you're upset about like, something. If you and your partner have fetishes that are in harmony with each other, Mm -hmm. can last a very long time based on that. If you both have fetishes that you're similar in a sense, let's say you both want to be in control. If you Mm -hmm. have that as your fetish, you're you're not going to have a long-term relationship. It has to end at a certain point because you're going to be in conflict. So if you find like a harmonic fetish, like whatever mm-hmm. your thing is, if that person sort of balances it, then you can you can keep it going for yeah. years. Because otherwise, you know, monogamy, as we always joke, you know, you've seen this. She's seen this this body, my body. I love you for being able to hang in there. <laughs> I think it's beautiful, um, you guys. <laughs> but you know, for thirty five years, you know, and then I always say to her, I've seen the same titties for thirty five yeah, years. Yeah. Those are the. <laughs> They have a little different look through yeah. the years. They change yeah. a little bit. They're relaxed. They're That's more relaxed right. through yeah. the years. Much. Well, I know. I, I'm, I just turned 59 yesterday or on January 3rd. I have your birthday was here. We wanted to wait. You look fabulous. I want to tell you happy you birthday. You look fabulous. You look yeah. great. Yes, you do. <laughs> You're the this, hottest this, grandma this in America. Is a great, let me tell great, you. great time for you now, Kat. These are what I call the wonder years. This is. I'm the, excited. I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, talking of fetishes, I was thinking that I had a boyfriend who had a foot fetish, and I do like my feet being played with, but I always thought it was weird when they put it like toes in their mouth. I was like, hmm, did they really like that? Yeah. yeah well, it, you know yeah. what it is. <laughs> what it partially is, is a. Um, Rep- repressed homosexuality oh, because geez. when you suck on a woman's toe it's a fetish <laughs> of penis i'm just saying i'm like i'm jewish don't forget i'm like freud and i get a lot of cocaine so i know a lot about these things See, <laughs> i broke if he had a foot fetish oh, yeah. i have a left foot that <laughs> looks like it went through slavery okay oh, no it's, shit. it's okay. burnt it, it's been through shit yes yes so <laughs> I put it out to him. I said, if you can love this foot, 
<laughs> my foot yeah. fetish went away. It went away. But I want to ask you, what did you learn about yourself during COVID? Oh gosh. Um, well, something that something I didn't know before. I, I, I think this was kind of a test. Ooh. I mean, I, it's almost like, I, it, it's not that I don't want to talk about it, but like, there's a lot of controversial stuff talk, uh, that people um, are going through right now. Um, and ooh. <laughs> all right, so let's just talk about what happened besides like my whole like thing as a nurse and whatever you don't, you don't, you don't it's okay if it's uncomfortable it's, i don't it's not that it's uncomfortable i just don't want to rile people up because i have my own kind of beliefs about it but what happened at the beginning of covid was i gutted my bus and started all over again and built it the way i wanted it that was the first thing the second thing is my beautiful 18 year old cat died who was my little co-pilot she would always sit on my shoulder when I was driving the bus. So now I have a big picture of her face on the front of the bus with a sunflower. She's a China cat sunflower, like the Grateful Dead song. <laughs> and the third thing that happened was I found out that my, hmm, all right, this is coming out anyway, cause I'm gonna write a book about it. But my biological father is not the man who I thought he was when I was growing up. And I found out at age 57 that uh, my biological father was an artist named Cedric Rogers. And I have a whole art lineage of people. Like I have a half sister, I have nieces, I have, and they're all artists. And I have a father who wrote books and illustrated and painted and grandparents wrote books and illustrated and they're very prolific. They're in Wikipedia. And I'm like, what? the uh, fuck can I swear like that was a huge revelation and it, yeah, it that feel the like that out? twisted my whole world inside out because I love my dad I adore him he was my um, most amazing parent and unfortunately I lost him this year he he passed away in June but he knew he knew and he didn't like treat, treat me any differently he just was like you're mine <laughs> you know, I, I, I can't imagine how you feel. And I, I'll just say this is that the lineage that you came from, it explains who you are in the sense of what your love was. And, and the thing is, is that your mom uh, had someone in your life who loved and nurtured you. So yeah. I think it's almost like you got the opportunity to be around someone who chose to love you. Yep. Who chose to be in the role of your father. Yep. And uh, there's something very freeing and powerful to me ab about that. Mm. Because a lot of the people who I call my family are not my same race. They were not my um, mother's children. Mm -hmm. And I, I love them dearly. Yeah. They chose to be your family. They chose yeah. to love you. Yes. Yeah, that too. I have um, my, my, my sister remarried and my brother-in-law has uh, three, three stepchildren with her. And mm -hmm. the thing I most respect and love about him is oh, that yes. he is, he is their dad. He has yeah. a child, uh, his, a birth child with my sister as well. You but wouldn't he, know the difference. He treats his mm -hmm. so-called stepchildren the same. And to mm -hmm. me, that's a beautiful thing as a father. I mean, your role as a father is to, um, which are a, a big problem in our culture today is that people don't have fathers. Even yeah. sometimes the father is staying. The father is supposed to teach you how to deal in the world. That's yeah. the father's you, you know, ultimate responsibility. And so many fathers are falling flat on that, even if they give their children a lot of money and they mm. you know, are very uh, generous in that way. If you're not with your children, if you don't give your children time and like a male energy, then mm -hmm. you don't have that, you know? Yeah. And I mean, that's a very big issue in our, in our culture. Uh, black people in, in particular in our culture are mm. uh, Bell Hooks who just died recently, the great feminist writer. I read a, a, a couple of her books about how young black boys, when they're little, they're the man of the family. 
And that's mm-hmm. not good. That's not no. what you're supposed to, um, you know, it's not a good growth thing. So yeah, I mean, just dad, imagine, yeah, mm-hmm. um, you know, for you that, uh, yes, you learned that this man was your father and your world was all twisted for, you know, in terms of opening that up. Mm-hmm. However, this person dedicated their lives to you. Yes. And I, I told, I love him so much. He was my rock. He was like, we were different, like our politics and all this other stuff, but there was a side of him that I totally identified with. He had a little mischievous streak. And I totally like, he was my dad. I was a daddy's girl. I was totally a daddy's girl. I still am. (laughs) Bye. Yeah. I, 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 I think, uh, when you have that, um, when you when you said you you give a lot, it's because you experienced being around a man that mm-hmm. you actually it was okay to give, and mm-hmm. you got back and yes. wasn't manipulated or fucked with or used. Yeah. So yeah. you know the thing is okay. So I know that it's that kind of energies out there. I yeah. just be very mindful in. Of course, it's going to attract people because people want to receive. Sure. But it's it's really looking at, you know, it took me a while to to find Steve. Her dad probably was a little shocked at how light skinned the black man I was. But yeah. other <laughs> he really me and he thought I was really funny and we had yeah. a great relationship. Yeah. And um, it was very, you know, she had a father that was, you know, uh, he took being a father very seriously. He was from yeah. another generation when. Uh, People weren't leaving their children the way they are now. I, yeah. I want. I really worry. Again, I worry and I'm fearful because yeah. I think that you need male energy in your life. I know that that you, know, you can have a. You don't have to have a dad. See, it's it's not about you know. Male energy can come from a woman, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it's we. The thing is, is that we need both energies in the yeah. world. I no. agree. I agree. I mean, my kids were growing up. I was divorced and um, I had two husbands. One, the my first daughter is for my first husband. My second, ch- two children are for my second husband. And I felt like it was my obligation to find a nice, good, like a good male to be in their lives that would be a good role model, be kind to them. And I think I could have probably missed out on a couple of the ones I chose, <laughs> but um, yeah, that was my intention. And I don't know. I think um, if I was, I, I, you don't get do overs, but I think at this point I have the perspective that I think I could have probably done some of that without a male presence that just made it more complicated. The ones I chose anyway. <laughs> like, you know, they, that, um, we, we don't make mistakes. Like everything that was in your life, like it never really pays to look back and think you made a mistake. Or regret. Or regret. Yeah. Everything that happens is ex- in a karmic sense from a Buddhist point of view. Everything that happens is exactly what you created. That's your yeah. karma. And you- Yeah, it's part of your journey. Whether it, you learn from it, that's it. There's no right. mistakes right. in a right. sense. Like. Right. And it's a healthy way to think, because if you keep thinking, you know, going back and blaming yourself for bad decisions that you make, you know, then you really get out. Because of, at out that of moment, that was where your mind was at to make that decision. But I'm, I'm OK. Now so you got to get right. Uh, if it was just me, though, I wouldn't care. Like it was like a teacher, another teacher in my life. But if they affected my kids in any way, then. I got upset. Like that was, that was like me beating myself up for making that decision because it touched my children in some way. You know what I feel from her though? When I listen to her with all of the things on her resume, she's mom first, like mom, <laughs> mom first. Like everything else on here, you have like the Marilyn yeah, Monroe know, and all these things. One of the, no, no, one she's of a the, mom. One mom of the all. deities is uh, Tara, who is the mother. Tara. Green Tara? Uh, we, we green all, is one of them. There's a lot of Tara. There's a lot of, a lot of aspects Tara. of Tara. Right. Uh, her ass, she's the rescuer. Um, and if yep. in some of the statues, if you look, one of her legs are out and she's like, what do you need, my child? I'm ready. Yeah. And so, it, you know, it's kind of like 
the next time you have a situation and a very wise man told me this and it's with Steve, <laughs> ask yourself. Oh, when you say things like that, yeah. you turn me on, okay. baby. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I get to watch? <laughs> ask yourself. Yeah, this is my Andre yeah. Trois. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ask, ask, ask yourself. Thanks <laughs> for the love for you. Yeah. I'll even grab yeah. a titty for yeah. you. See yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I, 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 he went <laughs> way down here. You couldn't even see it. Um, ask yourself, who is... Who am I identifying with? Mm. And that who, if it is your limited self, well, that little girl cat, right? Mm. Yeah. You, you want to identify with the cat who is now the wisdom woman. Yes, definitely. Definitely. So it, in terms of regret, is not beneficial at all. I know, I know. No lot of time. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely living in the present and um, I'm doing all the things that I want to do for myself and my kids. And that's why I'm taking a break is because I need to make this like, I, I need to take a break because of the, um, the building and the, the growing that I need to do. I, I think you time doing a phenomenal job. I think that... Um, you're such a great example for your, not just for your daughter, for your son. Yeah. And yeah. that's, that's really important. Uh, he needs to experience uh, uh, a woman with joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You he's he's been like. by my side since we moved up here. He's this been a, a good. Our good son, I don't know if you can see companion. him. What is that? Skull? Is, his name is Buddy. <laughs> he's Buddy. He's our son. He, yes. he is our <laughs> He's, uh, you know, mm. you know we, we have a lot of, we have a lot of little guys, little around guys here. around our, oh. yeah. <laughs> these are our oh. children. But he said he thinks you're hot, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does he know Tantra? Yeah. <laughs> Very much. He don't even need hands. He can make yeah. you come. He, just has, one he has one eye. eye. He looks Whoa. Wasn't there a Woody Allen movie like that where they just like yeah. sat yeah. next yeah. to each other and yeah. came? <laughs> Do you like to cook? Love it. Withdraw question. Yeah. I like do. I like to cook. I made some salmon and artichokes uh, for my birthday dinner. Did you grow the artichokes? I wish. I'm actually one day when I have my own piece of land, I'm gonna have an artichoke garden because I love them so much. That's my favorite vegetable. Okay, so let me ask These you. These are the uh, what do they call lightning round? Okay, questions. if you Here had you to choose Samantha the witch or uh, a, genie. a genie, I dream a genie. Oh God, I thought Samantha was smarter. So Samantha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you have yeah. a you have an opportunity to see the roll uh, the Rolling Stones or the Allman Brothers. Rolling Stones. Okay. Uh, the <laughs> Munsters or the Adams Family. What? The Munsters or the Adams Family. Adams Family. Okay. Um, what is this? Uh, but I love them both. Like it's hard. That's a hard Look, one. Yvonne DeCarlo was really hot. She was, yeah, really, uh, yeah, you know, and yeah. Uh, so was uh, Lily Munster. Yes, yes, yes. No, not Lily Munster. The other one, what was her name? Wasn't it? You know, it was uh, the, there was the niece who was the Marilyn one. was the niece. Marilyn was Marilyn. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes I yes. thought it was funny that she was the weirdo. <laughs> that was, that was, that was a. Statement they were making without really make without really going into it. Uh, I we know we found out that you love books. So I do. If you had to go, if you could go to either be in a character in an Anne Rice book or a Harry Potter book, which would you choose? Who Anne Rice? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I read yeah. everything she wrote. Mm hmm. I went to New I Orleans. I didn't read everything. I wrote all the vampire books, but read yeah. read all the vampire books. I went to New Orleans to see her home. Yeah. I've never been. I want to go to New Orleans. Oh my Literally. God, you would love Let New Let me Orleans. tell you something. She took me to New Orleans. She said it was going to be super romantic. The worst. She takes me, <laughs> like, instead of a hotel, we stayed in, like, a ho somebody's house, like, with, the, <laughs> with no air conditioning. It had a fan overhead. It was a French uh, style <laughs> room. No air conditioning. Ceiling it, fan. It, everything about New Orleans was lace curtains. Unbelievably humid. Nice. I had, I had my asthma spray attached to my face. Oh. It was so hot, <laughs> so torturous. 
I told her, I'm a kind of guy, if you take me to, I want a hotel. I want a soda machine in the hall. I Just don't want like, a romantic I wanted fans. to go to the graveyards and visit yeah. the graveyards. I'd rather sleep in a bus than in that place. <laughs> you want me in that place. Okay. Are you a- I was going to take my bus down there, but they said, you, you know, you probably get lost. Something. <laughs> it's kind of, it's, it's a little rough there. When you, you yeah. gotta to go, like yeah. any other city, yeah. New Orleans can be kind of scary if you don't know where you yeah. are. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm searching for weed in New Orleans, and that was a big mistake. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Check out this. Check out this story. When I was uh, ten years old, no, nine, my parents divorced, and my dad had picked up a hitchhiker on the way home from work. He commuted an hour. We had a farm and he worked in Rochester. So he brings this hitchhiker home. My mom falls in love with the hitchhiker and my parents get divorced like the year later. And we, she takes us out of school and puts us in a Volkswagen van and we drive to Mexico. That's how I ended up down there. And that was my first experience living on a vehicle. Wow. So having a bus like this is a luxury. Wow. Because there was three kids, a dog, two adults, and my mom was pregnant for my sister. Wow, your life is like a 1960s movie. That's yeah. what it is. Like, <laughs> I, I, I mean, it needs like, to be in a yeah, movie, it's like a right? 1960s. Well, yeah, like, if anyone's out there who wants to make my life into a movie, I'm willing to talk to you. <laughs> like, yeah, yes. So yes. this was great fun. Yes. Um, yeah. Is there anything you'd like to share before, before you go? End that, anything any you questions? want to say? Anything you want to ask? Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm just, I'm honored that you wanted to talk to me. I remember <laughs> you were really cool. from our first, from when we met you the last yes. time when we did the yes. uh, radio thing. And we, we, yeah. we see you on Facebook. You're a very interesting person. Like, we're not stalking you. We just find yes. you very yes, interesting. Yes, we are. You are yes. That's okay. I put it out there. Like, you All know, right. that's, that's my life. Not not really hiding much. I don't put out drama because why? Yeah. But yeah. yeah. So, when we, we don't have sex because it's Wednesday night. At our age, we got to schedule it ahead. We can't eat for three days before yeah. sex. We got to clean out our systems because the gas. Yeah. But we will have you in, in our minds. That's you will right. be in our minds. You know, we right. be on your bus. You know, yeah. I might be the. Uh, no, you don't like inconvenience. No, but no, but I'll be on the in the fantasy. No, I can not. do. It. Oh, no, I'm gonna do lying. it. I'm gonna do it. Tell the truth. Oh, okay. So the the bus actually has a bathroom. It has a a bunk like a single bed and a double bed, an art studio, kitchen, um, a wet bar, and a dining room. So wow. what we're asking awesome. for you is, I know you're not having sex now because you're. <laughs> You're in between, you're in the uh, yeah. Bardo, they call the Building bar- up my you're energy. <laughs> yes. Bardo, yes. Yes. between your past life and yes. your new future life in, in Tibetan Buddhism, you go to the Bardo and you mm. spend like seven weeks there and then you're reborn. So in this period in the Bardo, why, when you're, you know, you know, basically, can I say it? You know, maybe in a masturbatory thing, just remember the black and the Jew. Just visit us having sex. <laughs> And we're with you in the bus. I'm going to yes. go on the bus for her. Yes. I'm going to do it. I think they, <laughs> very, very. Oh. No, no. If if something ever happens and we're with you, uh-huh. Eve is not able to build a goddamn thing. Okay? <laughs> He's not able to do any of that no, shit. No, I can't do anything. No. Like I that. do all that stuff yeah, in our part. Yeah, no, you no, know, no, I'm not a. Uh, nothing. Um, no. My hands were made for uh, for fingering. fingering. Other than even fingering, I'm not really. No. What about your mouth? Mouth, I'm very good with my yeah. mouth. Yeah. You know? Okay, that's good. Oh, that's can't good. Shut him up. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm going down on you, I'm talking. He's and talking trying to tell shit. jokes. I'm trying to make you laugh. <laughs> that would be a whole other experience. <laughs> well, those women, are, I, it's been 35 years, yeah. but I do remember going down and still talking. Like, you yeah, know, you can't yeah. shut me yeah. up. Shut the fuck <laughs> trying to shut me up all the yes, time so yes, yes. anyway thank you so much cat yes. was- one more thing one more thing if if um if anybody wants to if you guys want to come see me i do the market at columbia university on thursdays it's farmer's market really? and we sell organic meat and eggs and some veggies and where is that exactly located it's, it's on like broadway and 114th street Okay. Between 114th and 115th. I was going to ask you also, did you do the one in Union Square? You don't do that one. No, we we I think we used to, but we don't we don't do that one anymore. It's pretty 
com competitive. We're the only organic meat people up, up in Columbia. Cool. Wow. I definitely will do what I can because I would a love to support you. And I, I know your stuff is great. You don't even have to buy anything. I just love to see you. If, if, if I'm doing that. Yes, yes, yes. I already, uh, you made something. It was, um, I, I don't know if it was like a board that you cook on or something you had made. Uh, I remember you, you were doing either Christmas gifts or some kind of gifts you were doing. Mm -hmm. and I was like, look at this shit. Look at what she does. I needed a woman like that. Like I a know. woman who could fix things. Like, could you yeah. do plumbing? You do plumbing, right? I do, like, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you got to come live with us. Yeah. Like YouTube. YouTube has everything you need to know. Like if you need to fix something on your vehicle, like just Google it on YouTube. Can't he can't he cannot can you hear me he can't do that <laughs> so much cat mondu thank yes. you so much thank you cat and we're <laughs> this on the dirty the truth, truth tellers, tellers. yes Mwah. bye 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 thank, bye. thank you take care and you too love you guys